Hi everybody, today's video is going to be talking about mercury exposure through fish consumption. So what's the issue at hand? The main issue is that fish contain mercury which is a toxic metal. This metal can accumulate in the muscles of fish and fish at the top of the food chain like predatory fish begin to store higher and higher levels of mercury in their muscles. Lastly, there are many severe health effects of being exposed to mercury. For instance, fetuses of pregnant women and young children are at a higher risk when it comes to mercury, but even healthy adults can be faced with side effects of high mercury levels in their systems. Therefore, it is of great importance to address the issue of mercury exposure through fish consumption and what types of fish are good to eat in moderation for an overall healthy diet. Now let's discuss what mercury is. Mercury is a toxic elemental metal that exists in many forms on earth. It can be found in the air as well as in the water. In its elemental form, mercury is a silvery liquid at room temperature. In water, mercury is found in a different form called methylmercury, which is just a byproduct from the conversion of mercury by bacteria which are present in the aquatic environment. So what happens when you eat too much seafood? Let's talk about that. So to start off, mercury is a toxic metal to begin with and will have serious side effects from exposure. What scientists have discovered is that mercury is also a neurotoxin, which is any substance that can cause harm slash toxic effects to the brain. And this is seen through side effect symptoms such as memory loss, insomnia, headaches, and delayed motor skills. Mercury is known to have harmful health effects towards the immune, digestive, and urinary systems. This is seen through the following symptoms like nausea, vomiting, kidney failure, digestive issues, and increased chances of cancer towards all the systems mentioned earlier. So I'm sure you've probably already noticed or seen this in a TV show, sitcom, or in real life of a pregnant woman mentioning being unable to enjoy seafood dining because their doctor warned them about it. And that is because research has shown mercury has harmful side effects towards fetal development, seen food symptoms such as slower brain development, damaged cells, digestive issues, and blood disorders on fetuses and newborns. Now that we know about some of the side effects of mercury poisoning, let's take a look at the case of Grassy Narrows First Nation, which is a great example of how mercury and fish has impacted an entire community. Grassy Narrows First Nation is an indigenous community located on the Wabagoon English River in northern Ontario, just to the northeast of Kenora. Due to poor environmental regulations and enforcement, from 1962 to 1970, the Dryden Chemicals Pulp and Paper Mill, located just upstream of Grassy Narrows, was able to dump over 9,000 kilograms of mercury into the local English Wabagoon water system. This mercury accumulated in local fish like walleye, which is one of the main sources of food for the community and is a staple of local economies and traditional practices. For years the community complained of the health impacts of eating these fish, but for a long time the government ignored their complaints and insisted that the fish were safe to eat. Without many other options, the community continued to eat high levels of these mercury contaminated fish. But what were the long term health impacts of consuming such high levels of these mercury contaminated fish? Well, in 2020, an award-winning study was published in The Lancet detailing the effects of mercury poisoning on mortality in grassy narrows. In this study, scientists studied hair from deceased community members to measure mercury levels in each person. They chose hair because in humans, when you ingest mercury, some of it will deposit in your hair follicles, and so examining the hair of deceased community members would be a good indicator of how much mercury a person had in their system when they died. This study found a direct link between mercury and early death in grassy narrows. Mercury levels in those who died before 60 were more than five times higher than others in the community. And mercury levels were found to be much higher in those who ate more fish, especially men who had worked in the fishing industry beforehand. All that to say that the article painted a really clear picture between the consumption of fish, mercury poisoning, and serious long-term health impacts. That being said, the effects of mercury poisoning go far beyond premature mortality rates in grassy narrows. Some studies have found that members of Grassy Narrows First Nation experience higher rates of depression and suicide, lower overall physical health, and some children are even born with brain cancers or develop seizures very early on in life. What's more, due to the high premature mortality rates, there's a lack of elders in the community, which makes it harder to pass down traditional knowledge and practices. On that note, 
Let's get into some governmental guidelines. According to Health Canada, certain fish such as fresh or frozen tuna, shark, swordfish, marlin, orange roughy, and escolar are said to contain high levels of mercury. We are advised to consume only up to 600 grams per month. Moreover, women who are in their childbearing age should consume only 150 grams per month. Children between the age of 5 to 11 should consume only 125 grams per month, while children between the age of 1 to 4 should consume only 75 grams per month. So, different types of fish contain different levels of mercury, but how much? Salmon, for example, contains 0.03 ppm on average, which is equal to 0.03 milligrams per kilogram. 0.04 ppm for scallops, 0.05 ppm for shrimps, and 0.06 ppm for cods. Crabs contain a bit higher level of mercury with 0.09 ppm. Catfish contain 0.15 ppm. Kingfish contain even higher with 0.21 ppm. And eels contain 0.24 ppm. Though canned light tuna is the most popular in Canada and is safe to consume with no specified limits, mercury levels in canned albacore tuna or canned white tuna may be higher than what is considered safe. This is because albacore tuna are comparatively larger and older than the tuna used in canned light tuna, which increase the risk of higher mercury accumulation. The advice from Health Canada is to consume no more than 300 grams a week for pregnant or breastfeeding women, 150 grams a week for children of 5 to 11 years old, and 75 grams a week for children of 1 to 4 years old. Yet, the general population other than these specified groups are safe to consume canned tuna. In the US, the Food and Drug Administration recommends the people the following three tips. First, do not eat shark, swordfish, king mackerel, and tilefish. They are considered to contain relatively higher levels of mercury that may cause negative effects in the human body. Second, eat up to 12 ounces a week of a variety of fish and shellfish that are lower in mercury. In this case, the best kinds to consume would be shrimp, canned light tuna, salmon, pollock, and catfish. Third, check the local advisories. As the Grassy Narrow case study shows us, it is important for us to know about the safety of fish in our local lakes, rivers, and coastal areas as we may have opportunities to catch and eat fish. In this case, eat up to 6 ounces or a meal per week of fish you catch from local waters, but do not consume any other fish during that week. Fish can be a healthy part of our diet. While fish offers a variety of nutrients for children and women of childbearing age, the developing fetus and young children are the most vulnerable to mercury exposure. We must be careful about the balance of our diet and consume not just one kind, but a variety of fish. Let's eat fish safely. Thanks for watching our video. All of the references are in the description below.